Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Now, sit down, strap yourself in, because we have a highly opinionated, bespectacled chef in the hot seat today reviewing some potentially pretentious ingredients with one of two incredibly good looking, handsome, but yet also very down to earth normals. Oh, I get it, you're switching in and out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, bacon wrapped potatoes with some sour cream and chives. I think what you'll find is the food team have called this bacon wrapped potatoes with a nice dip. I've inquired further, the nice dip is sour cream and mustard. Straight off, doesn't look very pretentious at all. Have a sniff, have a taste. Let me know if you can work out what you think might be potentially pretentious about this. A lovely mustard dip. Well, it's going to be the potato or the bacon. I'm going to say that the, the bacon looks... Um, Quality. Yeah. Boys, what you have in front of you is Iberico bacon. Bacon, but better. So Iberico pork is known for its juicy and tender meat. So what better way to try Iberico than in a delicious thick rasher of bacon? The abundance of fat from the Iberico pork elevates this bacon to a whole new level whilst it melts in the pan. This is a must for bacon and Iberico lovers. Can I just double check? What is a barico? Is it, is it a pig, a place, or a process? Yes. Good, good chat. Good chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, Iberico, Iberico pork comes from the distinctive black Iberico pig. So it's native to areas of Portugal and to Spain. Um, the pigs eat a diet mainly of acorns, very natural, they're allowed to roam. They are the best quality pigs that you could really hope to find that are cared for in the most loving way possible and then are absolutely delicious to eat. I can absolutely taste the fat is better and it is mostly fat um, and it is that wonderful fat. It is exceptional. Yeah. Oh, oh slap, slap, good slap, bacon slap, slap. slap. So that's the packet, that's how it comes. We got this from fine food specialists. They source theirs from a family run company, uh, Juan Pedro Domecq. They've been doing this for two centuries. I can't think of many places where a slice of bacon is going to be bettered by this if the price is as high as I imagine it has to be given the process and the rules around Iberico. So speaking of price, how much do you think we paid for 250 gram packets of the Iberico bacon? Bearing in mind like top supermarket brand levels, you're looking at sort of £3, £3.50 uh, for 250 grams. If that was six quid, I'd buy that. I'd, I'd buy that. I'd buy because I think it, it'd be worth the special treat. But oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna be more like 20. I reckon it's two pound a slice, 10 quid. Ebbers is on the money, nine pound 95. Wrapped round spuds on a fry up with some mushrooms, some tomatoes, some beans, toast, egg. It doesn't need Iberico. Iberico flavour should be savoured almost as is. And I can't think of where you'd put that. I'm kind of okay with it. I don't think I would pay that money for it because I think I'm happy with just normal, really good quality bacon. I suppose there's only one question left to ask. Iberico bacon, pretentious or not? No. It delivers on everything that it says. It's not pretentious. It just doesn't have a place on the fry-up. Don't feel for your fingers after I that. I know, I told you. That is impressive. Greased up. Number two. Uh, Barry, it must be your turn to lift the clock. It is. Yeah. Yeah? Give it a lift. Yeah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It's got the croissant golden colour and swirl and layers, but it's in a shape okay. of a die. I want to I see a cross section of this beast. May we? You mean a cross section? A cross. <laughs> From the outside, it looks like they've taken six croissants and squish them together, but on the inside it looks like they are one. Jamie, what is this? Boys, this is croissant cube bread. Created by a Swedish baker named Bedros Kibranian, he's actually part of the Swedish national pastry team. Essentially, he wanted to give a new shape to the iconic French breakfast bread. Didn't imagine for a second how big a ruckus this would cause on social media when he started promoting it. 
And don't get me wrong, because I'm sure he's a better baker than all of us put together. However, the very name croissant means crescent. Like, it is literally named after its shape. I like croissants when they're freshly baked and they're like crispy on the outside, soft in the middle. So I've always thought, could you put a croissant in a toaster? Now I think you could. Would you like to see what our food team has? No, I, I don't, I don't. I know it's gonna be really bad for me, so. <laughs> uh, what it, Jamie, did you, did you offend somebody in the, in the uh, food team? What we have in front of us is a- Monstrosity. <laughs> is a bread and butter pudding, but built as a cube, so that the layers of thick custard in between toasted bread with a raisin jam. Posh comfort food. This, this I'm down for. Yeah. God, what this is. And then we is also this? have the ultimate cheese toasty with multiple <laughs> cheeses for that incredible cheese ball. I'm trying to like be conscious of my cholesterol intake, but. Yeah, well just don't have any for the next three weeks. You'll be fine. Yin and yang. Tell my family I love them. Oh, I kissed yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance there's more cheese than bread in that toasty. Yes. No, too much, too far. So this is a bread and butter pudding built as a cube. So layers of thick custard in between toasted bread with a raisin jam, bread and butter pudding in itself. Okay, so right, this is delicious, but what's stopping you just doing the exact same thing with normal croissants? Tessellation. Oh. <laughs> this does make more sense to me, for some reason as a dessert, and I can't, I can't tell you for why. I think it is just the excess of cheese there makes it almost inedible. Whereas this is actually surprisingly tasty and light, and you actually get the crunch and the gooey, and it soaks it up. Does it add anything over and above a standard brioche loaf? Yeah, because I find brioche is just buttery and sweet. This is so textured and so light inside and with a really crispy outside as well. In fact, it's crispier than normal croissants mm. because you've got more of a solid surface area. What are you doing? <laughs> Getting the I'm, I'm providing the audio experience while you explain how much you love the crispy flakiness. That's just weird just, though, It's it? teamwork. <laughs> a little scratch. <laughs> <laughs> you do have better edges and more flakiness around there. Although I think you lose some of the elegance of a croissant. So we sourced this from a place called the Gourmet Market. Like the Cronut, these bakeries have got lines around the corner. They're selling out of them. They can't make them quick enough. So this really is a thing. How much do you think we paid for that croissant cube loaf? £8.50. And I'm going under that at £7.50. £6.50. Yeah. And you know what? You know when you're the one that gets sent to the local um, boulangerie to pick up croissants for the family? And if you're not very careful, by the time you get home, a few of them are squashed and crushed. At least you can put a couple of these next to each other and on top of each other in your basket on the front of the bike and you're home, no damage, done. What, Practical. What, what fairy tale are you living in? <laughs> Um, I, do you know what? 650, it's fun. I think you'd buy it, you'd do it once, you'd find out how to play with it. Yeah. I think you might stick to regular croissants after that. Maybe I'm wrong. Croissant cube loaf, pretentious or not? Oh, a little bit, but it's not pretentious. Now I've had time to digest it. Not this, but this. Not pretentious, kind of cool. This is going to take a while to digest, I promise you. <laughs> Please, Jamie, lift the cloche. Ooh, that is beautiful. Fancy, hey? So in front of you, you have a chawan mushi, which is a Japanese steamed savoury custard with uh, some soy marinated seafood in it. Could you just pronounce the name of the dish again? You said it so quickly, I almost didn't hear a, you pronounce it. You know what, it. stuff it. Chawan mushi. I don't know if you're right or wrong. Chawan, no. And the pretentious ingredient in question is in front of you as well, which is the soy sauce. Please, dig in. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Woo. Wow. Woo. <clears throat> That's phenomenal. Do you want to try it in the dish? It's got a wonderful wobble and set on it. Cheers. Cheers. Firstly, what are you expecting from soy sauce? I always just associate soy sauce as a seasoning, so one part of many things. Okay, so you seasoning put- Seasoning triangle. Okay. 
with a number of other condiments and together they season and elevate a dish. I think when it's more the focus and when you try on its own, it's completely stand out. That's the, uh, that's the soy sauce that we use here in the studio fairly regularly, um, a fairly standard soy. So just as a comparison, side by side. Oh, okay. It's harsh. Harsh. Harsh on the tongue. Okay. Uh, the also, viscosity is very different. Yeah, you can literally, the same, same volume in the dish, you can see through it. This is Kambiashi uh, soy sauce, five years old. Um, it originated in Japan. It's a soy sauce that is aged in cedar barrels for five years to give it its well-balanced, salty taste. This is the perfect ingredient to use in Asian cooking or on its own to drizzle over sashimi sushi. Ultimately, like with the previous ingredient, you're buying into centuries of tradition and process and respect for how a product gets to where it is and you're paying therefore not just for the process of fermenting but then for aging. I can't imagine using that in like a stir fry midweek or something like that but if we were to go to the effort of making sushi or buying really good quality sushi or sashimi or something I, that, it, that feels like the right place for it. Let's talk money. So bearing in mind the flavour and balance of this soy from Kambiashi relies on the exact replication of the process 250 years old and diligently overseen by the Okada family right up to the 17th generation of today. The standard soy sauce in front of you for a 200 ml bottle is £2.50. What do you reckon this one is? I would pay £25 for that bottle, 10 times the price. I think it's twice that. I think it's fifty pounds. I'm going to say fifty pounds. Interesting. Could you justify thirty-one pounds ninety-five? That doesn't surprise me. It's not hugely more than I thought. Less than you thought. It's less than I thought. It doesn't mean I'd be prepared to pay it. Again, just like the bacon, its application is so different from perhaps the like the staple midweek ingredients that we associate bacon and soy sauce to be a part of our pretty much everyday cooking. But that is a spectacular bottle of soy, soy sauce. sauce. Yeah. All right then, so is it pretentious or not? We said at the start, sometimes it's about the vocab and the language around the marketing and the packaging. But I don't know how else you would explain this if it wasn't for listing off the numbers of years, the years of fermentation and aging and cedar and the family name is important in the tradition. So I don't think it's pretentious, I think it's factual. I just think it's such quality that we don't get it anywhere else. This one could be interesting, boys. Ben, please, lift the cloche. Is it a chicken, Barry? Well done, Jamie, 10 points. Poulet affiné. Poulet. 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 These are La Cour de Moise Poulette Affine. These chickens have been favourite in the France's three-star Michelin restaurants. The chickens, hens and guinea fowls from Patty's Farm are renowned for their exceptional quality and incredible taste. So this is Michelin star chicken? Michelin star, yes. I mean, first impressions, it looks like a chicken. Like, there's nothing special. There's no, sometimes you can see there's a different colouring of the skin or something like that. It literally looks like a chicken. Should we eat it? I mean, cook it first, then, then eat it. Oh, Jamie, it's like Sunday lunch. So in front of you, you've got two dishes uh, cooked the same way, um, both slow roasted. One is the potentially pretentious ingredient, uh, and the other is a relatively standard one, but still good quality. Um, start dishing up. Should do a bit of thigh, Jay. I'm gonna give you a bit of thigh. It's worth pointing out the other one is still high welfare and really good quality. We're picking it up. We're going in. We're going, going in. in. Fingers. You going in? Oh. Yes, starting with the uh, potentially pretentious chicken. The poultry is fed with the cereals produced on the farm. Maize and wheat form the basis of their diet. With the addition of essential oils and more than 25 wild plants from this protected site. These include dandelion, heather, bramble, nettles, and horsetail. These plants are all selected. Um, for their tonic properties, and the farmer says they give them a much more organic flavour, but what are you getting? I'm getting two very different textures. Are you? From the two different chicken thighs. Okay. In terms of dark meat, which is what I've gone in with, mm. the thigh, I would say that the potentially pretentious one 
is incredibly dark. So it turns out, two weeks before their slaughter, they are on a strict diet of five different herbs, and for the hens, they are then also fed cow's milk. This creates a better distribution of the fat throughout the chicken, giving it a different texture. That feels crazy. <laughs> this, the potentially pretentious one, I feel is almost like game meat. It does taste incredible. It's just not what we always associate with chicken because we're so used to this style of chicken. So if you were creating your ultimate roast chicken dish for a bunch of mates, what chicken would you go for? Easy answer. Not standard the, chicken. Standard chicken. I'd go standard chicken. The potentially pretentious one is not bog standards. It tastes incredible. But its texture puts in a place where I think most people would think twice about it. Let's talk money again. So our standard high welfare chicken, uh, £8.30. What are you thinking for the potentially pretentious chicken? So I wouldn't think twice about £8.30 for chicken. Possibly pay a bit more. Would I pay double or triple? Three times the price, £25.20. I think that's £35. <laughs> uh, £55. For a single for, chicken. For a single chicken. In the 30 odd years on this planet. Why round down? <laughs> <laughs> in the down 30 years I've lived, I struggle to justify that price for a chicken based on all preconceptions. I just wonder if maybe that is part of including the Pigouvian tax. Whereas that, already high welfare, but is that just pushing the price down the road to other nutritional, sustainable, environmental concerns and costs, you know, in years to come? Is it pretentious? I'm not sure even all the backstory of feeding on the special tonic diet and the milk-fed chicken is something I'm quite ready to jump on board with yet. So it's very, very close to pretentious. Oh, oh. Very, very close to pretentious. Jay? All of the talk about eating special diets and drinking milk in the last two weeks of that, it just, that's bump, and therefore that's pretentious. Whoa, we got one! Finally, we can now call this episode a pretentious ingredients episode. It's about resetting the barometer of what is normal to us, and that's normal up until now, and what perhaps normal should be. And then probably more importantly, where you would use it. Because mm -hmm. I think most of those ingredients today are stand out on their own but where would you use them and is it midweek? I think that's where we need your help. Um, were any of these pretentious and what would you do with them? Please comment down below and let us know. We have an app. It's called Meal Packs and helps you plan and then cook a week's worth of meals using one set of ingredients, saving you money, cutting down on food waste and answering the age old question, what should we have for dinner? It's free to try for a whole month. The link is in the description box below. Anyways.